So just the graphing part, part yeah, of it. Gra yeah, graph. Just don't don't talk about the trig identity stuff yet because that's what she wants to talk about. So we'll talk about anything else. It's so like arc so sign, like arc tan, that kind of stuff. Uh, no, that yeah, you can you can ask those questions. That's inverse trig stuff. Perfect. Just just don't ask uh, questions yet about trig identities, which I don't even think you've gotten to that yet, have you? No, I haven't. Yeah, so you'll see that she's got some questions. I think she's a little, maybe a day or two ahead of your class, her her class. So yeah, um, she's taking the quiz, right? This one she that? probably has. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. We All have right, not so taken the quiz because she was like, because she said that um, she wanted to delay this unit a bit just to do a bit more, you know, uh -huh. a bit more. Yeah. Work. Okay. So there you go. The first step for this problem, I'm on the second page is to factor out a three, right? Good with that? See yes, how I did sir. that? Okay. Um, so when you do a cotangent graph, this is the one where the period of a cotangent, the basic period of the cotangent equals pi divided by B, not two pi. Cotangent and tangent are pi divided by B. Yeah, and then sine, cosine, Cosecant and secant, I believe, are um, those are the two, two pi. pi. That's right. So, what is B in our case? B would be three, so it would just be three pi. No pi over three. It's not pi over three. Right, you're dividing yeah. it by B. So your period is pi over three. Now, I like to find my interval lengths. I'll call them IL. My interval lengths are one fourth of that, one fourth of the period. So the interval lengths are pi over 12. Okay, that's how I like to do that. Um, this shifts it right pi over three and this shifts it up one. So for these problems, and again, different teachers teach it or different people do it different ways. I don't know how your teachers explains it, but what I like, to do is just I, I like to remember what the base graph is and the base graph for a cosine graph um it looks like this your base graph is going to go like that for a cosine graph yeah okay? so this is your zero so um we're going to graph look any different i mean cotangent and graph look any different no this is cotangent oh okay yeah your base graph for a tangent graph would have been like here like this yeah centered at zero zero but this okay. one isn't sent this one isn't centered at zero zero so what i like to do is i keep that in mind and then i shift left three so this is going to be this asymptote right here is going to be at pi over at I'm sorry right three is going to be at pi over three instead. So my graph's going to look like this. It's going to start at pi over three. That's going to be my my left asymptote. And then I'm going to use my period up here. Look at my my or my interval lengths. Yeah, my interval cool. length was pi over twelve. So I like to rewrite this pi over three in twelfths, the common denominators. So this is four pi over twelve, right? Yeah, that'll be. And then, five pi over and then, 12. yeah, yeah, and then just add them: five pi over twelve, six pi over six twelve, pi over twelve, which is pi over two, eight, and then nine pi over twelve, seven pi over twelve, and eight pi over twelve, which reduces which is three to fourths. three fourths. Very good. Okay, three pi over four. So that is how you set up your um, your graph. And then your asymptote is going to be here, like I said, at, at the first and at the last one. And then it's gonna shift up one, which means every one of these points shifts up one. So instead of that, that middle point being at zero, that middle point's going to be at one. Yep. Got it. So there's one. 
Yeah. And then it is the the um, the amplitude. It's not really the amplitude for this, but a in this case is also one. So that means I will go over one, up one. Whoops, sorry. Look at for this one. See how normally you go over one, up one. Yeah. Your normal point here is that point right there, and this point yeah. is down one. Yeah, what I'm saying. So go over one, go left one, and go up one from here, and that'll put you at your next point. And go right one and down one, and that'll put you at that point. And then your graph just gets drawn in. All right. So that's going to be my graph. And then I would always just check it to make sure it's right. Let's plug in 7 pi over 12. And if I plug in 7 pi over 12, this would be 4 pi over 12, right? And what's 7 minus right. 4? 7 minus 4 is 3. Good. And 3 pi over 12 would be what? That would be 1 fourth pi. Good. That's right. So the cotangent, 3 of 3 pi over 12 plus 1. And so this is like, I can cancel that. Well, I, I guess I could have canceled this with this. It's one fourth, right? Yeah. So this is the cotangent of 3 pi over 4 plus 1. And what's the cotangent of 3 pi over 4? The cotangent of 3 pi over 4. Think of your unit circle. That's over here. Is that 45? Oh, so do you, oh, that's how it all which is, which is that negative is, one, right? Yeah. Negative one plus one is zero. Zero. And there it is. That's zero. Hmm. So seven pi over 12 comma zero is a point and that checks out and I'm pretty confident that I did it right. Okay. So stretch or shrink, let's fill out these things here. The stretch or the shrink is going to be none. There's no stretch or shrink. Your yeah, period that's, like, was... that's your A value, right? Mm -hmm. Your right. period was pi over three. Yeah. Your interval lengths were pi over 12. And your shifts are um, right, pi over three, and up one okay yep next page so for this one this one like i was just talking about previously the tangent graph looks like this the tangent graph is centered and that middle point and it goes like this yeah okay so um, let's do the things that we have to do to this equation to make it look correct. So this so first, is negative. The, oh, yeah, it'll be negative 2 tan 4 and parentheses x. Let's call it 1 fourth x. Okay. Right? Yeah. 1 fourth x. So what's my period? Your period is 1 fourth. Careful. Your period well, is pi over yeah, 1 fourth. One fourth. And what's pi over one four? That makes it um four pi. Good. So your period is four pi, which means your interval lengths, this is easy, are just pi. Yep. Right. And I'm not shifting left or right. But notice that I'm centered for the tangent graph, it's centered here. At zero. So this center piece is not shifting left or right, but the but the interval lengths are pi so what i'm doing basically is i'm taking these and this is one pi over here right so let me draw my graph down here at the bottom so i'm still going to be centered there i'm not shifting left or right or up or down which means that point is still going to be setting there but now i'm going to my interval lengths are pi so that's one pi and that's negative pi and that's two pi and that's negative two pi yep. got it and then I draw yeah. in my asymptotes at the far points. 
And then now this is where it gets a little tricky. See how normally you would go over, look at your base graph again. You'd go over one, go over to this, which this would have been pi over four, up one. Yeah. That's normally where you go. And the oh, left, your acetope is two. Well, your A value. So now, yeah, my A value is two, which means instead of going over one, up one, which I would normally do, I'm going over one, up two. down, no, oh, not up I mean, two, down two, yeah. Down Because it's a negative. Right. Exactly. Over one, down two. So this point is actually going to be right there. And likewise, this point is going to be up here because it gets flipped. So it's flipped and stretched. That's what happened to that. It got flipped and it got stretched. So it's stretched. It's um, stretched. Oops. Stretched by a factor of two, but then it's also flipped. I don't know if they want you to put that there or with the shifts. I'd probably put I it up with the I think she was putting stretching. it with the shifts. Okay. So the yeah, shifts, be on uh, a shift over the X axis for this one. Well, that's really a reflection. It's not really yeah. a shift, but whatever. I, I prefer it to go with the stretch shrink because it really happens there. It doesn't happen yeah. with the shifts, but she would I'll do put it, it in both way. places. I'm sure. Yeah. So your period, like we talked about, is four pi. Your interval lengths are pi, and there's your points. And again, we can check it by plugging in one of these values. If I plug in pi here, what's the tangent of pi over four? Um, that would just be that would still just be pi over four. Right. Well, what's the tangent of pi over four? Think of your unit circle. Oh, um, tangent of pi over four. That's the just one. Pi over four is right it's here. Two over root two. But that's the sine and cosine. What's the tangent? Oh, it would be root two over root two, which equals one. Right. So this whole thing is one. And what's one times negative two? Um, that would be a negative two. And that checks out, right? Because look yeah. over here on our graph. It's pi comma negative two. So that works. Okay. Yep. So for the seeking graphs, we're back to basically we're going to graph the cosine graph. And then we're going to use the cosine graph to graph our seeking graph. Right? Yeah. So your cosine graph, remember, just to review what that looks like, your cosine graph starts up, ends up. But the seek, the co seek, I'm sorry, the seeking graph is going to be the reciprocal of that. So anywhere that goes through zero, anywhere the cosine goes through zero, that's going to be an asymptote, right? So this graph looks like this. It's going there and it's going there. That red graph is your cosecant graph or your secant graph. Y okay. equals secant X looks like that, okay? So that's what we're doing. And then you can erase the black cosine graph. So first thing we do is graph the cosine graph. So this is like the two times the cosine of one half times X plus, we're gonna divide by one half, which is like multiplying by two, two pi. See how I did that? Yeah. Plus one, and then plug it back in if you're not sure, like think to yourself, let's see, did that work? Yeah, that's gonna give me pi. Yep, that's right. So, Stretch shrink by a factor of one half. So it's shrinking. Is that four pi? Um, the period, okay. the period is, that's right. The period equals two pi over B and your B is one half. So Which it's is, four pi. Yeah. Good. It's really, your it's interval pi lengths times. are? Um, your interval interval length? lengths would just be pi. Four pi times one fourth, which is pi. Good. And your shift is? Um, your shift, you're going up one and down one. And then also, yeah, the A is left. Not up one and down one. I mean, we're you're going just doing up, up one, one. And we're going left. 
because of that plus two pi, you're going left two pi. Yeah. And then you're also, uh, um, your max and mins are going to be. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised it didn't ask that. Yeah. yeah. Amplitude is two. So let's go. Here we go. We're going to graph it, the cosine in black. And then we're going to put the secant in there in red. So the first thing I do is I start with my shift and it's left two pi. So there's negative two pi. It normally would have started at zero. Notice I'm not drawing my Y axis in yet. Now I'm going, the interval lengths are one pi. So I'm going to the right, to the right, to the right and to the right. I do four, I do a total of four intervals, which means five tick marks. Five marks, four intervals, yeah. right? And those are all separated. So now I now I know where my my y-axis is and I can just draw that in. And it is shifted up one. So it's going to start here at one. So there's my midline. at one, y equals one. Okay. And the amplitude is two. I like to do this in yellow. So two up from there will be three. That's the top, the max. Two down from there would be negative one. This is y equals negative one. This is y equals three. Yeah. Um, Don't like how unsymmetric that is. So I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. I'm a little anal retentive about this. I'm going to put that black line right in between the two yellow lines. Okay. Or at least as good as I can. Okay. And then uh, let's see. And then let's see. Shift up. So that's going to be our graph. Amplitude was two. Do we take care of everything else? Yep. So it's going to go like this. The cosine graph starts, it's the positive two, it starts at the top. It also ends at the top, goes through at, uh, Wait. The, goes to the bottom in the middle. Isn't this a secant, not a cosine? I know, but first, first you graph the cosine graph. Oh, you got to graph okay. both of them? Well, you graph it to help you. I don't know how your teacher teaches you, but this is what I, this is how I teach. You graph the cosine graph first. So you know what it looks like. And then you take the reciprocal of that. So this is gonna be in red. Wherever it goes through zero, the midline, that's where your asymptote's gonna be for your cosecant or for your secant graph. Do you see what I'm doing? Yeah. And now wherever the max and min points are, those are gonna be the same point for the cosine because one divided by one is just one. The reciprocal of one is just one. So this point is part of my cosine and it's gonna go like this. And this is gonna go like that. This is gonna go like that. And this is gonna go like that. And it's gonna keep going too, but we're only doing one period. You understand that? Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> That's the part then, that I missed. So, and then you can erase. Then you can erase this if you want, or you can just carefully label it so that you can see. So that's the secant graph. Gotcha. You graph the cosine graph first to use it to help you put your asymptotes in, and your your secant graph. You kind of flip the secant graph over, make it the reciprocal. Gotcha. So then. So then if it's up, so then if it's on um, a negative secant, the first um the first it would be down here, down, up, and then down, right? Close yeah, this. yeah. It if it was a it. negative if it was a negative secant, you would have started at the bottom for your cosine graph and you would have gone like this. So your graphs would have been flipped. It would have been here and here. Gotcha. Yep. All right, let's try this one. So what am I going to factor out first? Um, you would do the, you would factor out the two, I believe, first. 
Not two, it's one half. Oh, sorry, the one, yeah, the one half. Right. So how tell me what to do to factor that out. Um, it would be x minus pi over two times pi over three. That would be oh wait, you're dividing it out technically. Yeah, so it's two pi over three. Dividing by one half is like multiplying by the reciprocal. And then minus two. Yeah. And again, check it by plugging it, by multiplying it back in and ask yourself, is that going to give me this? And you'll see, oh, yep, yeah, that's going to work. Yep. Okay. So what's the shrink or the stretch? There's um, none. It just flips, right? Yeah. So it's going to flip. It's going to reflect over the origin or over the midline, rather. Your period is pi um, over one half, which is two pi. Yep. Which means your interval lengths Wait, are. A, wouldn't it be two pi over one half for this one? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was cotangent. Yeah. So yeah, it would yep, be four two. pi then. Yep. So two pi over one half, just four pi. So your interval lengths are pi, makes it easy. Your shifts are uh, right, two pi over three, and up, up, down, two. Yeah. Right? Yep. So here we go. It's going to be, normally we'd start at zero, but now instead we're starting at two pi over three. So I'm just going to call this two pi over three. And... I'm going to write that in terms of, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to add, I'm going to add basically three pi over three each time. Right. So three pi over three is going to give me yeah. five pi over three. Another three pi over three is going to give me eight pi, eight over, pi three. over three. Then it's going to be 11 pi over three. Then 14 pi over three. Perfect. So there's my, there's my interval length or my markers, so to speak. Also, the it, it goes down too. So um, let's see, let's make this right here. So so your y-axis is going to be over here somewhere. Okay? okay. And it goes down too. So one, two, there's negative two. There's your center line. I'm going to move these up to the top here. 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 8 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3, 14 pi over 3, so that I have more space below here. So there's my center line, my midline. Is that what they call it? Midline? Yeah. And I go up 1 and down 1. Up as much as one and down, so the uh, the amplitude is negative is one and it was negative one. So what my sine graph normally does, it normally starts in the middle and goes up like that, but this is going to start in the middle and go down because it's flipped. Okay, makes sense. So yeah. one point there, one point there, one point there. This is my sine graph. And it's going to go down to start, not up. And then it's going to go up. So there's my sine graph right there. Now I take the zeros of that graph and I make those asymptotes. So that's an asymptote, that's an asymptote, and that's an asymptote. And then I take those points those max and min points and I use those to graph hmm. my graph. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to watch thoughts. this definitely over another time yeah. or two, just cause this is For exactly, sure. this part is exactly what I missed on that one Friday. Got it. So, so that's how you do those. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So 
for these problems, find the exact value. Well, to find the exact value of these, we're gonna to wanna to look at the unit circle. And the unit circle, if I drop a blank unit circle in here. Oh, I gotta write myself a note. So the arc sine, this, this means the angle whose tangent is one, and it has to be between the tan inverse is defined between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna actually change these right here. Uh, I'm gonna kind of white them out. These actually should be thought of as, you, you don't need the third quadrant for, the, for this. So yeah. this whole quadrant, I can kind of get rid of that entire quadrant if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but you could do that if you wanted to. What you really need is these right here. You need this to be negative. This is a negative 30 degrees and negative, negative 45, 45 and then negative 90. I mean, negative 60 and then negative. Negative 60, negative 90. That's right. And this is uh, negative pi over six. This is negative pi over four. This is negative pi over three. This is negative pi over two. Yeah. That's, that's where it's defined. So tan inverse is defined in that region right there, not including the endpoints because it doesn't exist there. Um, sine inverse or arc sine, which is the same thing essentially, is defined between them, including the endpoints. Yeah. Whoops, I should have made that in blue. Let me fix that so you can see. So the sine inverse is defined between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. So it's defined like this. Got it? Yeah. And the cosine inverse is defined between uh, zero and pi. So it's defined between here and here. Those are the three main ones. Okay. Right. So when I'm doing these, I ask myself what angle within this range, this red range here, what angle has a tangent of one? And that would be this right here. I like to write my tangents in here. This is root three. This is one. This is one over root three. This is zero. This is undefined. This is undefined. This is negative root three. This is negative one. And this is negative one over root three. Okay. So what angle has a tangent of one in that red region over there? Um, what angle has a tangent of one in that? Oh, um, it would be root two over two, root two over two. So it's just pi over four. Pi over four, right. I want the angle. So the angle yeah. is pi over four. Number two or number six says what angle has a sine of zero in that blue region? Um, That would be just... One zero, which is zero. Good. So this is just zero. Zero degrees or zero radians. How about what angle has a cosine of one half? By the way, your your books sometimes when they when they write it like this, sometimes they the book says if you see it written as arc sine, give your answer in degrees. If you see it written as sine in negative one, write your answer in radians or vice versa. Does your book say something like that? Um, so what is your teacher? She, she says like, if you see arc sign, you can even write it if you want to as like, like sign and then like the, like the inverse of it. So, okay, good. That's what I, it, prefer, it's just whatever but... you prefer to see. So yeah. what, so she some, wants it in some, radians. She always wants it in radians. Okay. Yes. That sounds good. Some books use these two different notations to mean radians and degrees or vice versa sometimes but i didn't know if your book did that yeah we don't even okay, have so, a book this year so okay so what yeah. angle has a cosine of one half in this yellow region um 
would it be oh is this one of those that you gotta do like the triangle for no nope. think oh no cosine is right here cosine is your x coordinate oh I, I I don't know why, but I was looking at the tangents. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So the yeah, answer is what? Over three. Good. How about number five or nine? What oh, angle has is... a sine of negative root two over two? It's negative sine, so that would be um negative pi over four. Perfect. Good job. Nice, nicely done. All right, so for these ones, it's going to be, again, it's going to be that you first do what's inside because it's like PEMDAS, right? Order of operations. So what angle has a tangent of negative one? What angle has a tangent of negative one? Look at that red. The tangent of negative one is negative yeah. pi over four. Got it? So negative pi over four. And now you want to find the cosine of that which is just going to be equal to negative root two over two. Yeah. Okay. What's the sine of pi over three? Um, your sine of pi over three, that is going to be, um, let's see. So it's cosine and sine. Two. So it's going to be yeah, root three over two. Root three over two. And what's the cosine inverse of that? So um, what angle cosine of, has a cosine. Oh, that would just be two? pi over six. That'd be the other one. It'd be pi over six. Very good. And by the way, this always is going to happen because pi over six and pi over three are complementary angles. And whenever you have an arc cosine of a of the other, that's going to happen. If you, okay. if you do if you do a few of these, you'll see it and you'll be like, oh yeah, duh. But the only difference is if the outer one is an arc cosine, you have to make sure that you put you have to make sure that your answer is in the right region, in the right range. Gotcha. Okay? So let's jump to this one now. For instance, this one right here, you should you would maybe think, oh, these are just inverse operations. So can I just cancel them out? kind of you kind of can but 13 pi over three isn't in the range of arc cosine is it no 13 pi over three i want to be between zero and pi so i have to ask myself what angle has the same cosine as 13 pi over three um so you think oh. to yourself coterminal right yeah here's six pi over three Here's 12 well, pi over three. So it would be at that 30 degree angle in the first. So 60 degree actually pi over three. So here's 13 pi over three right here. Wait. So this, this angle is one pi over three, which is the 60 degree angle, not the 30 degree. Oh, okay. Duh. I see now. Okay. Got it. So your answer yeah. is pi over three. Oh, now for okay. this one, you have to draw your triangle. So this is some angle who has a cosine of five over eight. So that's in the first quadrant, five over eight. So this is eight, adjacent is five. So do your math, five squared plus y squared equals eight squared. So y squared equals 64 minus 25. 64 minus 25 is that'll be 39. 39. So y equals the square root of 39, which can't be simplified. So this is the square root of 39. So what's the tangent of that angle? The tangent of that angle is opposite. Yeah, opposite over, over hypotenuse. Adjacent tangent 